Life. La vida. Vida. Todo. Leben. Vida. It's life. Leben. Vida. Life. Lebenskraft. Vida. Leben. Life. Leben. Life. Leben. Sin agua no hay vida. Force of life. Without it, life is not possible on this earth. Water is blue gold, the very essence of our existence. The fuel that enables us to live, cultivate, feed and wash ourselves, produce and create. Are we not ourselves 70% water? Nevertheless, in our societies, where one often has only to turn on a tap to receive its blessings, we sometimes forget that water is a vulnerable and limited resource. Everywhere, in Europe as elsewhere, water is facing many and various threats. Anastasio is a farmer. He lives near Mercia in the southeast of Spain. This highly agricultural region, which alone supplies 20% of the fruit and vegetables produced in Spain, receives only 300 millimeters of rain per year. Every year Anastasio needs 15,000 meters cubed of water for his crops, so it has always been a serious concern for him. Well, the importance of water is vital. Why? Because there is very little. We have to use it at the maximum for the exploitation. La fórmula que tenemos para poder optimizar mejor los recursos es, es que hace ya muchos años que no utilizamos el, el riego tradicional, el riego eh, por inundación, sino que se utiliza el riego por goteo, un riego que se puede ahorrar hasta un 30% de agua de, de una forma a la otra. Despite this parsimonious and more efficient management of water, the farmers in the region have had to find a way to further increase their water resources. In fact, efficiency gains in water use can quickly be offset by the extension of the irrigated area, and as a consequence, water demand keeps on increasing. This is problematic, especially as farmers are not the only big users in the province. The tourism industry also consumes huge quantities of water, and both economic sectors may put at risk the minimum amount of water needed by nature itself, our flora and fauna, in order to survive. Several wastewater treatment centers have therefore been created in the region. Here, between 4,000 and 10,000 meters squared of water are treated every day in several stages. Firstly, there are two biological stages, which target, among other things, the removal of solids. This is the treatment of the tertiary of the depurator, which consists in a treatment of physical chemical with decantation lamellar, and además de eso, una filtración sobre arena y tratamiento ultravioleta. Aquí se añade cloro y sulfato de aluminio para desinfectar el agua. Bueno, y este es el objetivo final de todo el proceso de depuración. Obtener un agua totalmente limpia, sin sólidos y que respete el medio ambiente y toda la normativa europea. Este agua se podría decir que cumpliría con todos los parámetros para ser un agua prepotable. Which means it can be used for farming with no risk to health. Y al mismo tiempo, esa reutilización que estamos haciendo también evita el que en algún caso el agua vaya a los cauces de los ríos en condiciones que sean malas, que sean insalubres y estén contaminando los ríos. De esta forma, mantenemos nuestros ríos limpios, le damos una utilización nueva a ese agua y al mismo tiempo obtenemos un beneficio que nos hace falta para mantener nuestro medio de vida, que es la agricultura. However, Spain and the rest of Europe do not only have to cope with water shortages. Today, although European legislation has significantly improved the situation, the quality of this precious liquid can sometimes still be called into question. Do you feel ill? Are you in pain? Are you depressed? We have the solution. A multi-purpose product with anti-inflammatory, antidepressant and contraceptive ingredients. This revolutionary product is water. Fortunately, this isn't true. Nevertheless, we must be aware that in Europe, hundreds of tons of medicines are released every day into the environment, eliminated through natural paths or due to negligence. These may be microparticles, but they still end up in the water. To find out more, let's go to Germany. This big center in the south of Berlin is managed by the Federal Environment Agency. These pipes simulate lakes and waterways. 
The objective is to reconstitute ecosystems and evaluate the impact of introducing chemical products on the flora and fauna. Dabei betrachten wir die Verteilung der Chemikalien in der Umwelt, deren Lebensdauer, also Persistenz in der Umwelt und natürlich die Wirkungen, die die Chemikalien auf Umweltorganismen haben können. The scientists at the center analyze, among other things, the presence and impact of pharmaceutical products. Arzneimittel sind entworfen worden, um Effekte zu haben, natürlich bei Menschen bzw. beim jeweiligen Tier, für das sie verabreicht werden. Aber diese Effekte haben sie natürlich, können sie natürlich auch in der Umwelt haben. Beispiel sind die endokrinen Effekte von Kontrazeptiva, wo Umwelteffekte auch schon nachgewiesen worden sind. Cases of hermaphroditism have been recorded among some fish, the result of hormone disruption most likely due to the presence of traces of birth control pills in the water. Wir haben also eine Belastung des Abwassers und ähm, eine Gefährdung des Grundwassers vorliegen. Das ist natürlich kein deutsches Problem, das ist ein europaweites, wenn nicht sogar globales Problem. Although, luckily, no direct threat to humans has yet been identified from the levels of individual pharmaceutical substances, action must be taken at least to protect wildlife. Here in the Ruhr Basin in the west of the country, research has been launched following significant chemical pollution of the River Ruhr in 2006. Large-scale tests have been set up in this centre. After conventional treatment in several stages, the water is treated with ozone and active carbon to eliminate the chemical and pharmaceutical residues. Wir erreichen hier mit dieser Anlage nach dem ersten Versuchsjahr Abbaugrade von 50 bis maximal 60, 70 Prozent. Mehr ist derzeit nicht möglich. Es gibt ein Sprichwort der neuseeländischen Ureinwohner, das sinngemäß bedeutet, Das Wasser ist der Spiegel unserer Lebensgewohnheiten. Das heißt nichts anderes als alles das, was wir ins Wasser hineinbringen und was nicht biologisch abbaubar ist, werden wir auch in Resten wieder im Wasser finden. Prevention is always better than cure. In Germany as elsewhere, campaigns are organized to raise public awareness of the issue. Chemists encourage their customers to return unused medicines in order for them to be dealt with in an appropriate manner. It is also necessary to go further and reinforce the ecological dimension in the approval process for a new medicine. In any case, Europe is taking action. 2012 has been designated Water Year and the European Commission is working on improvements to the implementation of the Water Framework Directive which came into force in 2000. The Commission has already proposed to add 15 new substances to the existing list of controlled chemical products, including for the first time three pharmaceutical products. Protecting and maintaining the quality of our water resources is not a societal choice, it is a necessity. It is quite simply a question of everyone's survival and future. It is a struggle that will never be definitively won and in which we all, each at our own level, have a role to play.